third race on the card is the Albert Bartlett Hurdles race. This is a grade one race over three miles. Cracking Smart been ruled out of the festival, who would have been quite prominent in this market and this race alone. So it's a shame to see that horse being pulled out. Favourite in the Albert Bartlett, 9-2, Nicky Henderson Santini. He's two from two, comfortable winner at Newbury uh, last uh, on his first start. He was 7-2 in the race, won by four lengths on soft ground, and that was a class three race. The second in the race, um, Chef de Zobo, who reopposes in this market here, has since come out and won three in a row. So you can see that that form does appear to be quite strong. Nicky Henderson thinks quite a lot of Santini, and I can, I can understand why. He's also beaten uh, Black Op here in January. That was a grade two race. So again, only needs to step up that little bit more from that race. That was on heavy ground. The winning distance was a lot more comfortable than what the actual result was. Um, it is a step up in distance from two mile four to three miles. That's the only weakness for me for this horse in, in this race. Willie Mullins has the second favorite, five to one for next destination. Now we have mentioned him on previous days. He could feature if running in here. Again, he's another horse stepping up from two mile four to three miles. So he has got a little bit to find, especially as the last bit is pretty much all uphill uh, when it comes to Cheltenham, that last little bit as you come around the bend. So he, he cannot see him being a player in the market. Not really. I don't think he's going to run in this race. I think he'll run elsewhere. As I mentioned uh, when we were talking about Santini, the horse Chef de Zobo, he is my fancy for this race, and, I, and I'll tell you exactly why in a moment. Another one for Nicky Henderson at 7-1. to one. Now, if he does run in here, that form that Santini has proven, it's been well advertised, and it does look to be very, very strong. I think the question that everyone's going to be asking is, can, the, uh, can, can that form be reversed? In my opinion, yes. The wins at Kempton and Haydock were over this distance, so he's used to running over three miles, whereas Santini is not. 19 length winner on soft ground that was a class three the form questionable to say the least of that race he then raced in a grade two race at Hayduck. again a 15 length winner this time a bit of each way value to him this uh, in this race as well but i do fancy him to be winning this race and if i was asked to pick a winner and only one horse he would be the one that i'd be going on in this race Dutra Deneves also has an entry in this race, but again, because he's got multiple entries throughout the festival, we're not going to go into him at all in regards to this race. As I mentioned with Chef de Zabot, uh, Black Op was, has featured in these races and has been beaten by these by the two market principals, and he's Tom George's entry at 12 to 1. Just beaten, as I mentioned, by Santini last time out. He has won over two miles and five. Uh, he was eased on heavily ground, so you can see that it was quite an easy victory. Has got a step up in distance. That victory uh, was by 17 lengths at Doncaster on soft ground. He has got a step up, like I say. The form has got to be reversed. At 12 to 1, he does look to be quite overpriced in this market. I would expect him to make the frame at the very least. One horse to really focus on if the ground does get really testing is Henry de Bromhead's Chris's Dream. Chris's Dream also appears to be really overpriced, to be perfectly honest, in my, in my opinion. Like I say, he's 12 to 1. He, the start that he had over in Ireland, he won by 64. Yes, 64 lengths on heavy ground. So you can see that it, he'll stay all day long. Uh, that was at Clonmel. He won very, very easily. He's a market mover as well. He, he opened at 33 to 1. He's now all the way down to 12s. I'm not surprised at all. It was a grade 3 over in Ireland. So grade 3 to grade 1 over here. Yes, it has got a step up. Yes, we've only seen it the once. Could he be involved? Definitely. 64 lengths over in Ireland, yes. The, 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 it's not exactly a lot to beat when he, when he was racing over there. You can't question the horse. He just kept going and going and going and galloped him into submission. So I think Chris's Dream will play quite a big part in here. Fergo Bryan is the next one that we're going to talk about. Uh, he has a horse in here at 14 to 1 called Poetic Rhythm. Stepping up in distance again, but he has won two of his last three starts. Um, those He's won uh, a grade two. He was second in a grade two behind on the blind side. He was quite prominent in the market for a race earlier in the festival. Uh, he was only beaten by two and a half lengths. So yeah, on the blind side, it did look quite cozy at, at times. Uh, but again, you have to take out of that exactly what it says. Uh, and that does appear to be quite strong form. He won a grade one race on heavy ground at Newbury. We've not seen him since New Year's Day. That could be the only thing that worries me three uh, three months effectively without seeing the horse. I do ask that question. The second who was in that race at Newbury has come out again. 
he ran here against Santini, uh, where Santini won the race and he finished fourth. So if you look at it that, fourth's not exactly the worst place to finish um, behind what looks to be quite a close finish. So I'm willing to say that this horse should be involved at the end. Whether or not, when I'm saying involved, I think he'll be involved coming up to the last couple. Will he be involved when the finish line comes to it? I'm not entirely sure. An outsider in this market for me, and if he runs, is ridiculously overpriced. He's 33 to 1 from Willie Mullins, and that's Brahma Bull. Now, Brahma Bull has had four straight victories, three bumpers granted, and a hurdle race. So you can see that he's done the transition nicely. It had a fair few runs in bumpers, and one that was quite cozy as well. Hurdle win was over this distance, so it hasn't got anything to find in, in regards to distance. Was at 11 lengths after a slight mistake at the last, so you can see even after the mistake, it's still found again and got it stoked up again, and away she, away the horse went again. The only thing that worries me is that that was back in November. Now I've just mentioned uh, before that I was worried about a horse that we haven't seen since December, well New Year's Day effectively. It, this therefore worries me even more. The form of the race isn't exactly working out. He does need to be a little bit tidier over his hurdles, but if Willie Mullins runs him in here, we know what Willie Mullins can do with a horse. And again, 33 to 1 does seem to be quite big in the market. So for me, this year, the Albert Bartlett, my fancy is going to be Chef de Zabo to win the race and reverse the form with Santini. Santini should be involved when it comes to the finish, if seeing out the distance, that's the only thing that worries me. If the ground goes really soft, Chris Dream is definitely going to be there at the end. Um, so I might even have a, a little... A little go on the reverse forecast market of those two because I expect those two to be the first two. Over.